Do you realize that the greatest power, literally, the greatest power that God has given to men and women is the power of prayer? There's no greater power that God has given to you than the power of prayer. There's no greater power that God has given to me. We talk about the wonderful gifts of the Spirit, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, oh, the gift of faith, the gift of healing. These wonderful gifts, I know they're glorious. They're thrilling. Even the gift that Jesus gave to his church before he went away, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And yet when it comes to all that God has given, even through his Son and through the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift, that God has given to any individual is the gift of prayer. Think of the power of prayer, of being able to come literally before the Father's throne, the throne of God Almighty, He who spoke the very worlds into existence, He who knows no limit to His power, and there is no defeat in him. He knows no defeat. All-powerful, perfect wisdom. Think of it. Just pause a minute. I'm sitting here myself trying to fathom the power there is in prayer then why in the world don't you do something about it? Think of the years that you have lived without prayer. Think of the weeks that have gone by without prayer. Think of the days that you've spent without prayer. A great psychiatrist says that in neglecting prayer, we're neglecting the greatest single power in the healing of disease. And he absolutely refuses to take a patient who does not believe in God. He says it's impossible to get people straightened out unless they have something to tie to and to love beyond themselves. A medical man, a doctor recently, stopped me here in Pittsburgh and he said, Catherine Kuhlman, I'd like to have a personal talk with you. I said, all right, doctor. He said, at your convenience, I would like to come to the office and talk with you because he said, you are giving to people something that I want to inject into my contact with my patients. And it's just like that. Think of it. It's impossible to get people straightened out unless they have something to tie to, something to love beyond themselves. For a few minutes, we're going to talk about this art of prayer because it's something that we must learn. Sometimes I think we fail in not teaching men and women how to pray. Remember what I said, if we learn it. And that's the rub, that's the catch. People expect results without any practice of the art. You know, we think it'd be a very foolish person who stepped up to a musical instrument only occasionally, expecting to tune into music and become the instrument of music without long training and practice. The little son of a missionary bought a mouth organ in India and then he came home in tears. He was heartbroken, crying, holding the mouth organ in his hand. 
And he said, Daddy, that man cheated me. He cheated me. There's no God save the king in this mouth organ. <laughs> the man who was demonstrating it on the street, of course, played the song, God Save the King. And the dear little old fellow thought that if you, all he had to do was to just buy the mouth organ and blow on it, and it would play God Save the King. And, of course, we just as foolishly believe that we can get ready-made results without the practice of prayer, and it just isn't done. It's just like there are three important things when it comes to prayer. First, listen. Second, learn. The third, obey. And without all three, prayer will be a farce instead of a force. And if we spent half the time in learning how to pray as we do in learning any other art, we'd get ten times the result. Remember something. Prayer is not a luxury. It's a life. Oh, I'd give anything in the world if in these next few minutes I could just give you something that I feel on the inside of me that... I know that I have learned about prayer. Oh, it hasn't all come in just an hour or a day. No, ma'am. I have learned a long time ago that prayer is a life. I mean exactly that. And it's a matter of self-giving. I may say some things today that you never thought about. Some things that you never considered when you pray. And perhaps these are some of the reasons why you are not getting answers to prayer. I repeat something that's vitally important. Prayer is self-giving. The request must be backed up by you or the answer will not be backed up by God. God cannot give you things apart from himself and you cannot take things from God apart from yourself. Prayer involves a mutual self-giving. You give yourself to him, and he in turn gives himself to you. It's a two-way proposition. But some people never realize that. It's always, give me, Lord, give me, Lord. Every time some folk think of prayer, it's always a one-way street. Give me. And they have never, never given God a thing. They want the miracle of God giving of himself to them. But they have never considered even for a moment the giving of themselves to him. Do you understand now what I mean when I say prayer is not a luxury? It's a life, literally. The request, the prayer must be backed by you. And every prayer that has an answer involves a mutual self-giving. Decide what you really want. For if the whole you does not really want it, the prayer is blocked. 
Do you know what I'm talking about when I say the whole you? All of you? Decide whether the thing that you want is a question thing. Now here's another rub. <laughs> Is the thing that you're asking for, is the thing that you are wanting so desperately, is it a Christian thing? God is a Christ-like God. His actions are Christ-like actions. He cannot answer prayer only if the thing desired is in accord with Christ. That's what Jesus meant when he said, if ye shall ask anything in my name, in other words, in my character, according to my spirit. Don't try to get God to do something that isn't Christ-like. He can't. But he cannot do something against his own nature. And within that limit, he gives you freedom to ask anything. Perhaps in the answer to that prayer, eventually it might be self-destructive. It could be the worst thing in the whole world for you. I can look back now <laughs> in some of the things that I've asked him to do for me. I prayed at the moment I wanted them so desperately. Do you want to know something? I do not have perfect Wisdom, perfect knowledge. I cannot see into the future. Neither can you. And perhaps many times in praying, if God were to answer that prayer, it would be the worst thing in the world for us. It's the most wonderful thing in the world to have perfect confidence in Him. Oh, you talk about confidence. I have confidence in my Heavenly Father, so much confidence that I can say to Him now, I'm telling you, Father, you know what's best for me. I'm not going to dictate the thing to you. I've got confidence. The longer I live, the more I realize that confidence and trust are the two greatest things in the world. When you can say to somebody, I have perfect confidence in you, that's the highest compliment you can pay them. When you can say to somebody, I trust you completely and mean it with all of your heart, that's the greatest compliment that you can pay an individual. And there are very few people that you can say that to. Very few. But, oh, it's glorious. It's so thrilling to have somebody that you can say, I have confidence in you. I trust you. Because you know that in that confidence and trust, they'll not do anything that'll harm you. Everything is for your good. And then to be able to say that to the Heavenly Father, dear God, there's some things that I want so much. Oh, you know how much I want these things. I'm just desperate. But I'm human. I do not have perfect wisdom. I do not have perfect knowledge. I do not know what's out there in the future. I do not know what things fully surround me. But you see what I cannot see. You see on the other side of the cloud. And so I have such confidence in you that I'd leave it to your judgment. 
You do what is best for me. And when I can say it and mean it with every atom of my being, that prayer will be answered in the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. And it's just like that. Simple. Sure, it's simple, but yet so profound because sometimes it's the hardest thing in the world to do. Now, here's something that's vitally important. I find it one of the most important things that there is in prayer. First of all, give yourself completely. But as you give yourself completely in prayer, then he gives you of himself. But the next step is to steal the mind. How very often you've heard me quote it, that familiar portion of the Word of God, be still and know that I am God. Just as the moon cannot be reflected well on a restless sea, so God cannot get to an unquiet mind. In this day and age, there's so much frustration, there's so much confusion, there's so much noise out there. Oh, sometimes I get so weary of confusion. I get so weary of the noise. said to someone the other day who has an apartment on a very busy thoroughfare. I said, how in the world can you get any rest? How can you sleep with, with, with all of the noise out there? And she said to me, well, I'll tell you something. Very frankly, I'm so used to that noise that when it's quiet, I can't sleep. It's like that. We're living such unnatural such abnormal lives. And people are like that in their prayer. They've never learned the art of being still, of quieting the mind. Be still and know. Be unstill and you do not know. God cannot get to you. In the stillness of the prayer itself, there may be some corrections made. For God does not only answer prayer, he also corrects prayer and makes it more answerable. How often, before I've gone to sleep at night, I've been so desperate about something, so desperate. And I prayed, hardly knowing how to pray, scarcely knowing the will of God in making that request known, and yet weary in body. And I have fallen asleep. This has happened not once, not a score of times, but literally it has become a vital part of my prayer. I have been awakened in the middle of the night knowing exactly what to do and how to take care of that problem. He didn't give me the answer in confusion or while I was frustrated. But it was when I was still, relaxed in the quietness of 
hospital. And he gave me the answer. And the one who gave the answer was perfect wisdom, perfect knowledge, perfect love, a perfect and powerful heavenly father. Try it. It works.